Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lee, Solutions Engineer at DJI, and today I'm going to walk you through mission planning in FlyHub 2 and just show you how easy it is to create a routine mapping mission. FlyHub 2's mission planning function lets you easily import existing fly paths or even create brand new ones right on this map. You can choose from different mission types, you can manage, edit, sync all these missions to your pilots or docs out in the field. So we're going to go ahead and create a routine mapping mission. First, I want to ensure that we're in the right organization and project. Once we're in the right project, we're going to go ahead and select flight route library. From here, we're going to create a route. Um, there are multiple route types to choose from. So we're going to kind of break down all these options. So the first one being waypoint, that's for creating custom flight paths. You have patrol, which is for things like search and monitoring area route for 2d or 3d mapping linear, for inspecting corridors like power lines or pipelines, slope for mapping vertical surfaces, geometric for creating precise 3D models of standard structures, and then you have your smart 3D capture, which allows for advanced high resolution photogrammetry of complex objects from every angle. For this example, we're going to select the area route Make sure you pick the correct aircraft and model for your mission. Today we'll be using the Matrice 4 Enterprise Series and Matrice 4T as the correct model. Give your route a name. Baseball Park, and we're gonna click OK. Next, it's going to ask you to select a reference takeoff point. This is essentially your dock's location or where your drone will take off. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and start in the parking lot. From here, it's going to ask you to click on the map to draw a, the mapping area that you desire to map. So we want to do the baseball field. Once you're done, go ahead and select this check mark. From here, it's going to start generating your flight route. Um, essentially, it's going to automatically populate information with the coverage area and estimated flight time over here on your top left. So going down some of these settings, the first thing you can always do is reset your takeoff point. So that's essentially where uh, we selected the parking lot in the beginning of the mission. From here, it's going to ask you to select the right lens. So if you want visual for RGB or IR for thermal. For this particular uh, mapping mission, we are going to do uh, visible RGB. So from here, photo collection, you have the option to choose from ortho for 2D. This gives you a bird's eye view. So it flies over the baseball field looking a deer at a bird's eye view. Or you can do oblique for 3D missions uh, to get photos at different angles to see all sides. We're going to go ahead and select oblique. I'm going to turn off smart oblique to kind of explain a concept to you. In order to get a 3D model, you have to fly different angles and sides. So this would be the first path. There's a total of five paths for this 3D model. This would be the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Essentially by flying these five flight paths and getting different angles of the baseball field, we're able to generate a 3D model. So from here, we're going to talk about grants, gra ground sampling distance or GSD. So for for the for each lens, a lower GSD gives you a high detailed precise map, which means flying at a lower altitude or collecting more data. A higher GSD is better for a general overview of a large area, allowing you to fly higher and collect less data. Keep in mind that changing the DSD will directly uh, be related to the drone's altitude and also lots of other parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an example. We're going to change this flight altitude to 200 feet. So you can see the flight is eight minutes and 17 seconds. If I were to increase the GSD, you could see the flight took a little more time. So if I increase it significantly a little more, it went to six minutes. So a lower, a lower GSD is going to give you a more high detailed mission map, but it's going to take longer. So now going into smart oblique, 
Smart Oblique Flight Mode is a great way to be create a more efficient 3D model. Uh, it automatically captures images from different multiple angles and rotating the drone's gimbal to various angles. So typically it'll take photos at nadir, 45, 60, and 135. So by turning this on, instead of having to do the five flight paths at different angles, the, the camera's gimbal um, is essentially able to change different directions and give you that different angle to give you a 3D model. So it can be a lot more efficient. Altitude mode. So you have your waypoint altitude mode. This is great. This is this is great for changing the drone's altitude and how it's calculated and maintained. So starting with ASL, this provides a constant altitude above mean sea level. ALT, which maintains a constant altitude relative to where your drone's takeoff point was. And then you also have AGL, which ensures a consistent altitude above the terrain. So here we have three terrain follow options. So you have real-time terrain follow. By selecting this, uh, essentially it uses the drone's obstacle avoidance sensors to accurately understand the drone's altitude above the ground. If we turn that off, we can now not, now, not utilize real-time terrain follow. We can use the DSM, the digital surface model. So this is the file pulled from the internet instead of using your own DSM. Um, our default is Aster GDEM V3. And then lastly, you can follow uh, a traditional DSM import where you will survey prior and load that surface model into FlyHub 2 and use um, that. Now going into direct ascent versus safe takeoff, uh, essentially direct ascent will fly to the correct altitude selected and then directly fly to the first waypoint. So your drone will fly straight up to the safe altitude and then move to the first waypoint. You have, then you have safe takeoff, which includes the direct ascent, but also additionally safety checks to ensure that your drone avoids any obstacles before starting its mission. So it'll fly to its safe takeoff altitude and from there fly directly to, the, to its first uh, waypoint. So you have two different options. Gimbal angle refers to the camera's tilt angle for smart oblique capture. And then you have global flight speed. This dictates the drone's velocity during the automated mission, which directly impacts the efficiency and mission duration. The software will automatically um, allow you to fly as fast as the, the, the camera shutter speed can capture the data. And that's gonna be based on your altitude and your overlap settings. Uh, if you're looking at smart oblique, the value is already preset. Then you have course angle. This selects the primary orientation of the flight line. So if we go here and adjust them, you could see the lawnmower pattern changing, and this can be used to optimize for wind conditions or even more specific project requirements. And then upon completion, once that mission is done, you have a few options to dictate what the drone does. Uh, you can choose from return to home, return to start point and hover, exit the task, or land which all can be used to ensure a safe and predictable end to the automated flight. We're gonna stick with return to home. Now going into the advanced settings, there are a bunch of advanced settings. Uh, takeoff speed refers to the speed of the aircraft when going to the start point. You have side overlap rate and forward overlap rate, which controls the percentage of overlap between the images. And then you have route start point, so right now, currently our route is starting here. If we were to select this, it gives us a few different options on where we want to start. So essentially a drone will take off and fly to this first start point here. If we wanted it to start here instead, we're able to have it start at this point. So you can choose where your start point is. Essentially, once you've done that, ensure to click complete settings to save that. And then now we have custom geozone obstacle bypassing. This feature allows the drone to automatically navigate around no fly zones that you have defined in FlyHub 2. And then now we have also bypass obstacle. This mode allows it to automatically maneuver around any detected obstacles to complete its mission safely. Once all your selections are made, please go ahead and save your new area route. So you can see it says save successfully. Now we could also preview the route in 3D to confirm everything looks good. Once created, we're going to go back to flight route library. This is where you can 
easily sort by models from oldest to newest and even create folders to keep things organized. If you need to find something specific, there's even a search function for easy filtering by route type or any other criteria. To send missions to pilots in the field, you will need to use Pilot 2. Ensure your controller is connected to Flight Hub 2 and you are in the right project. In Pilot 2, go ahead and select the flight route. Once in the library, you will need to switch to the Cloud tab where you can see all the missions. To download the mission, tap and hold and download on the bottom right corner. You can now go back and view that in the library. For this example, we will select the baseball park. Once open, you can view all mission details from Flight Hub 2 and adjust any parameters as needed to ensure that the mission information is accurate. Any missions created in Flight Hub 2 can easily be synced to Pilot 2 and Pilot 2 back to Flight Hub 2. For users that have DJI docs, you can assign the mission to a specific doc in the task plan library. We'll cover that more in another video. Thanks for watching.